Tell me about these uh, certificates you got, because they're pretty cool. Yeah, so I've got some old Australian records I broke. There were because before it was the under sixteen, under eighteen, and under twenty, which was junior now. Yep. There was no youth. Where youth is under seventeen now, and that's it. There was youth and there's youth and junior now. That's what I believe. But yeah, so I've got a few of the under eighteen records here. If you, like, you can read them for me, I yeah, don't, cool. I've got. So this is from uh, 2007. Yeah. How old were you in 2007? 2007, so... 18. Yeah, I was 18. <laughs> so at 18 years of age, you totaled 285. Yeah. Well, That's that, pretty good. Yeah, that was that competition. I, at another comp, I think I did 290. I've done one... Yeah, I think my best at 18 was 130, 160. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I'm still trying to do... A 130 clean and jerks. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what's your best left, Sarah? Um, in competition, 80 and 101. Yeah, and that's what... Um, that was follow. in the 63 category yeah. um, at the Junior World in 2017. Um, and that's the biggest comp you've done to date? Yeah. Yeah. And um, how, how old were you when you hit that? I was 17, so that was okay. my last year's year. Good job. And then if we look through these, oh, so you were a 77 at one yeah. stage as well. Yeah. Oh, in the same year? The same year. That was at the start of the year. And what, you just hit puberty and... No, <laughs> I, I was, it was time to move up, that's it. Ah, like, okay. I don't want to hold my strength back. My dad told me to start going up. Um, and from now, I never dropped back down to 77, that's it, once I went up. So what does that feel like to, to like, do you slowly feel that your strength is just limited by your weight or like over time well, does, your, does it just get harder to hold your body weight back well especially when you're young you don't want to hold yourself back uh, like when you're because i started training when i was 13 yeah and i was actually 69 then when i was first competing at 13 and um I was a bit like I was a chubby kid too. Like I probably could have been like sixty kilos, if yeah. I, you know, if I didn't. So as I was training, I was getting stronger but losing fat at the same time. And I did move up to seventy seven, and I lost a lot of fat, but I was still a bit chubby. And then I stayed seventy seven for a while because I put on more muscle and lost all the fat. And then there was a time where that's it. I'm very fit, and I'm trying to. I'm starting to weigh 80, 81 in training and then to lose a few kilos and I'm still young, I'm still like 17, 18, it's better off just go up and get stronger, 80. So that was the time where I decided I can go up. Like, and when you were competing as a 85, you were never like truly 85 for a long time, right? You're yeah, still- for a long time. I was like, um, well... I probably weighed 85, but it's just like, I just, you know, w- was eating whatever. I didn't have to, you know, worry about it too much. I could just, I was probably weighing 85, but really if I wanted to cut back, I could go down to 80 pretty easily. Yeah. yeah. So like you were that guy that showed up to weigh in with the sandwich and just yeah, his yeah. head while everyone else is going to drink, like, drink <laughs> heaps, eat heaps and stuff. And then eventually um, I had to really strict my, like get strict to go down to 85 because i was weighing 88 89 <laughs> in training so that's that's the thing so that's it's a benefit to put on weight and then you really get your best out of you when you cut back as well because you know you're at that you're really in that category because yeah. you're versed you know you're not just sort of versing people that are bigger than you you want to you want to be like that guy that's a true 85 kilo lifter not someone just weighing 81 and just you're in that division. You want to be weighing 88 and dropping back because that means you're a real 85 lifter. Yeah. You're ma- you're you know making the the most of that category. Yeah, and that's that's, that's the competitor, uh, like the competitive side of weightlifting. Yeah, right? yeah. That you wanna you wanna you know get you wanna play the game. Yeah. So if the weight class says you have to be under 85, then you only have to be underweight 85 for like that one minute that you're on the scale. Yeah, 
But um, I don't recommend that for a young lifter. Yep. If you're get putting on weight as a young lifter, I'd let you. I'd, you know, it's you're better off going up. Keep going up as your as your body grows. Let let the weight go on as long as it's not like you're just eating junk and getting fat or whatever. But um, if you're growing and getting stronger, you're better off. You know, letting that happen, not restricting restricting yourself. So. And do you see that as a problem? Like, do you see um, coaches nowadays holding? young lifters back in weight at all um i don't i don't know if that's happening a lot like because I, I don't know what people are doing I don't, i'm not there when you know when stuff's going on yeah when stuff is happening i don't go like i'm not involved with that too much but um yeah i i, I wouldn't know i wouldn't know but I, it's just me that's just what i believe you know if someone's growing and getting stronger they should not hold that back when they're young so um, cause you know, if you're just going to keep, you know, holding yourself back, you, you're not going to get the full benefit. You might as well just, you, you know, use and take advantage with you know, getting stronger and lifting more. So, so you started at 13. How old were you when you started Sarah? Um, I started training when I was 12, but competing when I turned 13. And why is it that you started weightlifting? Like, was it just natural because your brother and your dad were both, you know, great lifters? Um, yeah, well, originally I was never gonna do weightlifting. I actually was doing tennis. Um, you know, I was taking that up professionally and stuff. Um, but, you know, things happen and then it got hard for, you know, my dad to take me to tennis training while he was training Malik. Yeah. So there was a stage where I stopped, like I wasn't doing any sport. Um, and then I sort of got bored and like, I you always used to watch Mac train anyway. And Mac just suggested it to me, well, you know, why don't you just try, you know, do a bit of weightlifting. So I started doing a bit of the movements and Malik realized, oh yeah, she's pretty good. Um, you know, I was picking up the technique really quickly and I was like, okay, yeah, I'll just try weightlifting then. And then just kicked off from there. Uh, Saba could do a really good snatch the first day she did the snatch she was already able to do a full snatch she could sit right down so you had the flexibility already yeah, yeah. which she is was, which is abnormal for tennis players right like they d generally don't have well, like the super amount of flexibility she, when she played tennis that's just a sport she tried she wasn't really a tennis player uh, she just like you know when you're growing up you're at school you play tennis you play football whatever you do all these different sports she was just doing a bit of tennis for a bit and she never really did you really compete much yeah, there? I was competing. a little bit but it wasn't like um it, she I didn't she never took any sport seriously like weightlifting yeah but that was the sport i probably i would have taken seriously yeah. if i had continued her. Yeah. Tennis, yeah. yeah yeah if she didn't do what i think she probably would have you would have continued with tennis yeah. and that would have been yeah but um yeah she straight away could pick up the like she she could snatch straight away like you know that it was no no problem with that her body moved really well <laughs> so you're like a you're an athlete first and then you were a tennis player second <laughs> or a, you know an athlete first and then a weight I, have you always been athletic as well yeah. are you talking yeah. about Saba or no but you Malik oh okay yeah well um I wouldn't say like I I felt like I was a strong kid yeah. I felt like I was strong but I don't I wouldn't say I was that athletic because I was chubby I wasn't like the best in athletics at school or anything, you know, like the fastest runner or could jump, you know. I wasn't winning any athletics carnivals and I was never in the top teams for any sport. So like, I was just couldn't catch a ball or do much, you know, with my limited vision. But yeah. I felt like I had some strength in me. I can do something, but I just couldn't show my potential. And, um, but I, I realized I was a bit strong, like doing things like, push-ups people couldn't do like a proper push-up like they they had to do it on their knees or their hips are touching the floor and they're just really awkward doing stuff but me i could push my body weight easy and move and do things even though i was a bit chubby and overweight yeah i, I, I felt like i was strong kid and then um yeah it turned out you know i could do I had, I think the main thing when I first started weightlifting, my legs were strong, but other than that, um, I didn't really have much going for me. Like I wasn't that, I feel like I wasn't like uh, super flexible like Saba or anything. I was a bit stiff and 
Yeah, but I was just a little bit strong, you know. I could say my legs were a bit strong, and that's it. Wasn't super talented, I wouldn't say. Yeah. So for so people that that may be listening or watching, mm. they might not know that you're actually legally blind. Yeah. Uh, what does that mean? Well, le- well now you, I could say I'm actually blind. Before yeah. I was le- legally blind. Legally blind means you you're partially sighted. You can see a bit, but um, so for some people that's how it stays stable like that. For me, what I've got, retinitis pigmentosa, I um, had my eyesight and slowly losing it, progressive um, deterioration of the retina. So um, yeah, it just year by year that you know just kept getting worse my eyesight. I was diagnosed when I was seven years old, but I, I may have had it when I was um, born. Um, we just. The first signs when I was seven years old, I was tripping over at night. Um, I couldn't see, you know, it was worse at night, tripping over on stairs and things. And then they got my eyes tested, figured I had this condition. And I was, they knew I'm, that's it. When you got RP, red and eyes being dirty, you're going, you're going to go blind eventually. But they, they don't know when, it's just, could it could be very a slow progression or a quick one, but for me, Pretty, pretty much by 12, you know, within five years, most of my eyesight was gone. And throughout my career, my dad was my coach and he um, was with me for every training session. He guided me to the bar and, and you know, it was up to me to lift the weight from there. <laughs> I just, yeah. So I do want to stay on, um, stay on your sight and your condition for a bit, if that's okay. Yeah. Because uh, I just have a lot of questions. Yeah. So from what, what I've read, the, the first thing that goes is your night vision, as you mentioned. Yeah. And then your field of vision actually closes down, right? Yeah, yeah. So it starts becoming almost like a tunnel. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And then when I, I actually met you a while back. Yeah. And uh, I remember you saying that at this stage, all I can see is like blurs and colors. Yeah. And is that sort of where you are now? Or has it... Uh, n- you know, now I can choice? only see... Um, now I could see like a bit of if a light's on or, on, or that's it like yeah. where, if there's something bright like a window open and sun coming through I can I'm aware that there's a bit of light coming from there yeah but I I used to be able to see a blur and movements and stuff like when I first competed um, I could see that there was um, a bar on the platform and but I couldn't see how much weight, like the weights would blend into each other. I couldn't see any markings or anything on the bar. It just looked like a blur of a weight and a square platform, but I wouldn't see any dust or anything, any detail yeah. on the platform. It just looked like there was something there. And because I know it's a weightlifting bar, I, I knew it was a bar. But if I didn't know weightlifting, I wouldn't know what the hell is this square thing? What's that? You know what I mean? So it's a bit like, cause I sort of know what it is. I think I can see it, yes. but I, I really can't say much like i sometimes i think i can see more because i know it's i know what's there like if if there's a car driving past on the road because i know it's a car i think i can see the car but i just really i'm just seeing a little bit of a blur or movement yeah that was before but now i wouldn't be able to say that it's gotten worse so it's just the light like i said um and I, I'm not sure what it is like to have perfect eyesight because I've never had it. Like I was, even though I was diagnosed at seven years old with retinitis pigmentosa, I, don't, I still wouldn't know how much um, a normal person can see. Yeah. I was probably still, it was probably all still a blur to me back then. Yeah. What I could see. So yeah, it's, it's a bit hard to explain what, I'm, what I could see. No, you're see. doing a good job. Yeah. I, I just, it's, I think for for the people at home, if they hear you describe it, yeah. what you can see, I think they get a sense of of how important it is that you found weightlifting first off. Yeah. Because I know um, from what I've heard you talk about in other interviews and things that that weightlifting has been like a, a significant part of your life. Like it, yeah. it is probably that outlet that has you know, kept you athletic yeah. when, you know, maybe a lot of people that might suffer from, you know, similar conditions yeah. maybe don't do anything. 
Yeah, I, well, I, I, I'm, I'm 100% someone that's blind can be at least fit, like they don't have to be a champion or whatever, but they can enjoy being strong and fit, doing some sort of exercise. You know, that's, that's the least, you know, that you can do and that's really good, like that's a great thing to have, like if you feel confident and strong and you look good, you know, from training, that's, that's pretty good for someone that's blind. And f like for me, obviously, you know, I made it really high and when I was lucky to have my father with me all the way to coach me and make it to like do something really unbelievable. It's never been done. So I'm really proud that I can do that. But yeah, you can keep it fit too. If that's what, some, you know, someone's goal is. Um, yeah. How does it, uh, like, what was it like for you, Saba, uh, growing up and watching your brother, like, you know, your brother's uh, eyesight deteriorate and him just, like, continue to lift? Um, well, when I was younger, I didn't really know much yeah. about that. So I thought, oh, yeah, like, maybe he just probably needs a bit of glasses. A um, bit of glasses? <laughs> 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 trying to train um, you know with like very limited eyesight almost no eyesight now um, so now it's like it's such an inspiration and like you know I don't, I don't want to take any training session for granted now um, does it does it make you re like on a day where you're like I'm sure you have days where you feel lazy yeah everyone does mm -hmm. right yeah. on a day like that do you just sort of like think about Malik and like I gotta really try this session like <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wouldn't say all the time. <laughs> you know, some of them are like, so what? I don't care if you did that. No, she's not. <laughs> no, she's, she's not allowed to get lazy. My dad will like tell her off. She is like, she's. It's so, before before she thinks of me. She thinks of her dad. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't no, that true? My dad. My dad will say the ones look. Malik had an excuse because of his eyesight. Sorry, right, but you don't have an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, like you, you don't have an excuse for missing jerks. Malik, all right, he can't see what's you know the foot goes in front. He's losing his balance. But what's your excuse? Really? Yeah, he always throws that one at yeah. me. So I have to go back and get it. What mm. What's it like having your dad as a coach? Because so can you first off, um, either of you, can you tell me like your dad was a a good weightlifter, right? Oh, he was a very good weightlifter. What were his best numbers? And well, he's he's done in. Um, competition 145 snatch 180 clean jerk at 82 he's one of those lifters that were really really good but just a, he, he's not really people know him in weightlifting but he wasn't known outside of weightlifting that much because yeah. he didn't get that light and success he didn't have the luck because he just come second to Robert Cabas the one of the greatest lifter in Australian weightlifting and then he'd miss out on going to a team like the Olympics uh. or going to the Commonwealth Games, like he lost to um, Robert Cabas the Commonwealth Games trials, I believe, by two and a half kilos. Um, Dad did 180, uh, I think he did 185 clean and jerk and Robert Cabas got 187 and beat him by two kilos. And then Robert Cabas went there and won gold. Yeah. So pretty much if you're on the team before in Dad's days, whoever went there, was most of the guys would win a gold or silver at the Commonwealth Games. In those days like if you're on the Australian team going to the Commonwealth Games you're gonna win a medal so it was unlucky like he was doing those weights for top like if he's second in Australia that means he's second in the Commonwealth yeah you know what I'm saying but you don't get to go yeah to show me. yeah and he for the Olympic trials when he went two weeks before because he was a mechanic um, and he burnt his arm uh, his, whole arm. his whole arm got yeah. burnt and he, he went uh, he couldn't train like the last two weeks and he went to try to compete and he couldn't lift anything that's it his arm was too burnt and that's it it was he was at his best then too and then that was where um 
they went to the Los Angeles Olympics and they won medals too. Robert Kubats got a silver there and Dean Lucan won a gold. Like that was when all the Soviet Union pulled out. Yeah. And um, that had just some bad luck he could, in his career. But he was one of those lifters that did the big weights, but he didn't... Um, he didn't get the press for it. Yeah, yeah. He didn't get the, the glory, you know, with, you know, with, you know, Commonwealth or Olympics and stuff like that. But um, yeah, he was one of those tough, um, you know, good Australian lifters that, that people know, you know, that knew him, but not, didn't get the fame from winning, you know, or anything like that. But, well, yeah. What's he like as a, as a coach? Actually, wait, can you tell me the story of how he got you into weightlifting first? You're talking about me or Yeah, you, Malik, sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm going to keep doing this because yeah. you... You, I know that you're blind in my head, yeah. but the way you carry yourself yeah. is of a very much abled person. Yeah. So I'm going to keep making this mistake. I'm used to pretending like I'm someone that can see. Like I always play like because I don't want to show it that yeah. I can't see. You know. So that's probably why Saba was saying before she didn't really see it much because I was training and doing this and that. You know, you saw me walking around inside. Where when I know my way, I p always put myself in a situation where I, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I don't want to look like I'm struggling. You know what I mean? Well, I saw that when you yeah. so we so I came in through the front. So guys at home, I came in through the front door. The, their gym is right at the back of their house, and Malik was like right this way and just guided me through the house. Yeah. And he definitely knew where he was going. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> And he wasn't sort of like bumping into things or anything. So like, yeah, yeah you obviously, um, like no, no I, I said to him that you obviously know your way around this place, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so pretty much you want to know how, um, we, it was a question you want to know how dad got me into yeah. weightlifting. Um, well, like I said, when I, I tried different sports at school and I didn't do that well in anything, um, just, uh, I, I wanted to be like the, the best in something, especially in sport, like I just love sport, like all right, forget about academic, I didn't care about being the top in school or whatever like that, but um, when it came to sport, I wanted to be really good and then I was never, I was always in the low teams in sport and that's where all the unathletic kids were, yeah. and I'm like, man, I'm better than these guys, why am I here, you know, what am I doing? You know, I'm trying, I tried basketball, rugby, those were like, rugby was a big sport in my school. I went to Newington College. Yeah. And that's a big, like a private school. And yeah, that was... And what age were you at this point? Uh, that was before I started lifting. So I'd say, was it about 10 and 12, around there? And can I ask another question? Why was being good at sports so important to you? Was it because you knew your dad was a really good athlete? Or was it just well, uh, because of the school and... Like the way you've been brought up, or Oof, it's just I think boys just want to be athletic and strong. I think it's just something. I was a young boy and I wanted to be good at sport. I don't know why. I don't know why that was. I just had this. I think it's it's you know you, you most of people that are popular are usually athletic kids and you just want to be the best. That's it. It's just I don't know. That's just how I felt. I don't know. It's just, but um, it wasn't working. Whatever I was doing, I was I wasn't able to achieve anything. And then I had a serious conversation with my dad. I was telling him like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like I I wanna I wanna be good at something. Like what 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 can I do? And he said to me, you know what? Um, I'll I'll get you to start weightlifting. What my sport? And I didn't really want to do weightlifting to be honest, because it wasn't one of those. Um, popular sports you see on TV or anything um, and I didn't know much about it other than dad's old videos and stuff and it looked a bit like I don't know it just it seemed like a bit of a weird sport to do weightlifting but then I thought about it, I'm like oh that it could be all right because at least I'll be I'll, you know doing weights you get you look big and strong and at least so at least I'll get fit and that'll that'll be pretty good as well even though it's not like a it wasn't a popular sport that you'd see I, I didn't know about Olympics and Commonwealth Games then too 
but then um, bef then Sydney 2000 Olympics came as well and that took me there and I realised well this is what weightlifting <laughs> was like the atmosphere of the Olympic Games and I w we went to an event there and we went to the opening ceremony and everything and then I think I was only 11 then and then um, f when dad put that idea into my head I kept telling him okay when are we going to start when are we going to start and he kept saying oh, ne um, oh next month you know next he kept delaying it <laughs> for a year I think he's realised how am I going to get this blind kid to, <laughs> to wear this thing like, he probably just wanted to shut me up like you know you know, and then finally, finally he took me to the gym and then I saw what weightlifting was and it wasn't what I thought. I thought it was just like all strength and then I had to let him learn how to sit down and squat and put a bow. Like it was like, athlete, like gymnastic, you know, like you got to be like, I had to do it with a stick and all these, like, what's this training, you know, um, you know, doing a snatch of balance and all this weird stuff. And then, then once I started, dad would not let me stop. He, that's it. I was stuck with it. Like, I, um, I, I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted, like, I didn't really want to do weightlifting anymore. But then he'd say, "No, you, we've got to go." Like, and then it, and it was getting a bit annoying and hard. And then until I first competed in when I was thirteen, I loved competing. I got six out of six in my first comp, and then I got six out of six in my second competition. I loved like, oh, this is the the adrenaline of a comp, like getting three snatches three clean jerks it was, it was mad like I was like all right now I've got I did my PBs or whatever there I'm like now I want to I want to keep training and getting my PBs and then I started looking at rankings and records I'm like what do I need to do to make this team what do I need to do to break this record and I was looking at I was just and I'm I was looking at all that stuff and I was trying to get every record I could in New South Wales in Australia and trying to you know make all those Australian teams and once I started doing that I saw the success and it was you know progress I was progressively you know um, um, you know improving and it, w it became fun you know after that but at the start I didn't really like it and I, it wasn't what I thought it was yeah but then what I did you think it was me yeah oh, what did you think it was no <sighs> I don't, I don't know, to be honest, I don't know what it was. I thought it was just like, um, you know, you just like, you, it's like a bench press, you push something or whatever, like you just need to use brute strength. Like I didn't think it was like, you gotta be fast and like, um, and flexible and sit right there. I don't know, I, I just thought you just gotta like, um, use your strength to carry something and, th <laughs> and push it up. Like, you know, I don't know. I didn't, you didn't realize there was the finesse involved. No, I didn't. It was like a dance, right? Yeah, it's like it's it, it wasn't what I thought at all, you know. But but yeah, it was. Um, it became good after, you know. I just I, I, I learned like to appreciate the athleticism you need for weightlifting, and I I started to really you know like now I really love weightlifting, you know. Um, I, I could really appreciate someone that can do a, you know a snatch or a clean and jerk like you know those those champions something what it takes to be a champion I, re I really appreciate the work and dedication to achieve that so yeah i'm glad i got into that because this is the only sport i could have achieved like i could do um at the high level without sight against abled people yeah and so, that's a big deal to you right yeah that you not only are you good at the sport, yeah. but you are able to compete uh, against able able people? Yeah, that's that's the big thing. Um, I didn't want to compete in a sport like a Paralympic sort of sport, or there's no weightlifting in the Paralympics. It's only anyway. powerlifting. It's right? powerlifting, yeah, because um, I just wanted to feel normal. You know, I just want to do like. Um, living my life like a normal person not just I don't want to be known as someone that's just blind I just want to I'm just like everyone else you know it's just you know just like I love sport I just want to do normal things it's not like it's I don't have to be put in that category you know as someone different I'm just like everyone else that's that's why it was very important for me to compete in the regular sport of weightlifting You've been around Malik, yeah. um, Saba learning to snatch, clean and jerk, 
uh, back squat, front squat, and all of those things. How does her learning those movements, like how does uh, her learning those movements from your dad differ from how your dad taught you those movements? Like, uh, is it uh, like were there certain cues, were there certain exercises that your dad used with you that he doesn't use with Saba? Like, is there a difference, or did you guys learn very similar ways? I think we learn similar ways. It's just that um, with Saba, he expects it to be a bit more perfect. Like we said before, like there's no like <laughs> no excuse for Saba to lose balance or do things like he. But even to be honest, even with me, there was no excuse. Like my dad was a tough coach, so he didn't treat me like someone that was that was blind at all. Like. I, I didn't even treat myself like someone that was blind. Like, I uh, I was, <laughs> you know, the, the smarter you become, like, and wiser you become when you're older, actually backfires, yeah. I reckon. I, th- I was just, like, young, and um, when I first started, and didn't, didn't give a crap, like, about my so I didn't even think about it. I just thought, I'm just going to be the best weightlifter. And um, that didn't treat me like anyone. But... Probably silently, you know, not in front of me. He'd go and talk to other coaches and tell them, you know, you know, with Malik it's harder. You can't do this and that. But he wouldn't say it in front of me. Yeah. He didn't want me to hear that, you know. Um, and the the more, you know, the more smart you try to be and more careful when this and that doesn't work, because you start to get fear in your mind and you you can't do it. You just start realizing that I'm gonna lose balance. It's gonna it's not gonna work and just does you know just negative thoughts come into your mind you you don't want to think about that and when have there been times where you, you've let those thoughts creep into your mind like uh, uh, in your lifting um i have sometimes in training when i feel like oh i could see a bit better before i could um you know i could see the bar a bit better and because uh, you know when you go to approach the bar um, to go do a lift for a normal person I can imagine they, c- they know where their grip is um, so they're not even thinking about the grip or what they're going to do they're just thinking I'm getting psyched to lift this weight they go down grab the bar and then set themselves and lift for me I'm like okay where am I oh, someone's, like someone's walking me or my dad's walking me to yeah. the bar I'm like wait hang on where am I oh shit I just touched my foot onto the bar oh there it is Okay, wait, let me go find my grip now. Uh, all right, I got my left. Oh, that's pretty straight. That's straight. And then dad tells me, open your left. Oh, shit, I was a bit crooked. Okay, now think of lifting the big weight. But I'm standing there about to lift the big weight too. So all that distraction. And then it sort of like puts me off from getting psyched to go. Because you've got to be really fucking psyched to go and get this weight. But then i got to suck myself quickly at the bar. So, so I'm taking my time the bar and I'm already bent and I'm down there I could have done that while I was standing up Mm. and I could have been really soft and not even worried about where my grip is and just if I could see I'll just go and grab it without thinking but I gotta I gotta be like you know cautious where I am dad taking me to the bar trying to grip the bar and then so it puts me off to get psyched for a big lift and I've thought about that but then this was just in training and other things but when i'm actually competing i never think about that stuff i just think that this is what it is like i just i'm really psyched and i want to lift i don't i don't think about all these distractions but it's actually what's happening you know like when i think about it sometimes and it's a bit like i think how how much more can i do if i was really if i wasn't blind you know if if i could actually lift the weight and not worry about things around me and like distract, you know, trying to walk around where I am and that. I, I could imagine I'd be, for you know, rep, each rep doing that, it probably, like, it's, it, it takes a bit of, um, it drains me a bit doing that all the time. But then, yeah, it w- I would have probably, I'd, I'd probably be able to do a lot more if I could see, you know, better. That's what I reckon. It's, it's, it would be the truth, but I don't want to think about that too much. Yeah, like yeah. you don't want to dwell on it. Yeah, I don't want to dwell on it, yeah. So that's what I... That's, that's, that's hap- you know, I've thought about that, but um, 
not not when I was not when I was young and not when I'm actually training and competing. But I've I've had uh, times where I thought that, but it's just I didn't worry about it too much though. That's it is what it is, you know. And I'm just I'm really happy that I'm doing this sport. I'm able to <laughs> like there's people that dream about you know going to like a Commonwealth Games and you know winning a competition representing Australia whatever like a lot of people have everything and they wouldn't have that opportunity they just you know so I'm I'm blessed to have the opportunity to do that and yeah I don't it's you know it's good I'm 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 happy you know it doesn't doesn't worry me <laughs> yeah Sava what are your thoughts on your dad coaching you um, I like it, like, because he did weightlifting, he knows, um, you know, what, what it takes, um, to be a good lifter and, you know, every training session, you know, how to actually do the lifts, like, I know there are some coaches that have never done weightlifting before, so how can they actually teach, you know, a snatch or a clean and jerk that they've never done before, they don't know what it feels like, so with my dad, I trust him, like, I can trust, you know, the way he's training me and because he's gone through all of that. Um, you know, if I'm having a crap day, he's, he knows, like, you know, his experience days, like, you know, he's been through that. So, you know, um, I can just say, like, you know, I just trust in what he says. Um, and also, like, because it's my dad too, he wants the best out of me. Yeah. So he'll push me further, you know, to do my very best. And, yeah, I, I like it. And, you know, I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't want someone else to train me anyway. Like, there's no one better than your father to coach you since and I know that I see I see you at competitions helping Malik uh, in the warm up room and stuff does Malik ever help you with your training <laughs> well actually when I first started it was Malik that taught me the technique and how to lift like, oh really yeah oh, so it wasn't it wasn't, it wasn't dad. my dad because mm. Malik got me into it my dad didn't know Malik had actually started um, you know, teaching me the lifts. <laughs> so he One. taught me how to snatch and clean and jerk and all that stuff, the technique. And then I think it was probably for about maybe three months, I think. And when I first started, we only had a men's bar too. So yeah. I was using the men's bar as well. And, and um, she was using school shoes as well. I think yeah, <laughs> and I had the school shoes too. Um, yeah, and then after, um, he's like, Dad, look, I've got Sava Dilpid waiting. Can you come have a look at her technique? And all that stuff, and then Dad came in from there, you know, fixed a couple of things up. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was actually Malik that got me into it and like trained me at the start. Mm. Um, I think because Malik was injured that year yeah. or something, like he was uh, out for a bit. I was so injured and bored, and um, Saba was watching me train when I was training, and then yeah. I told her, "Do you want to try it with the stick and bar?" And then. What, when she started doing the movements, all I needed was someone to watch her when she as she progresses and lifts weights now because I can't see if it's too heavy or yep. if her technique goes off. But I know when she's doing it with a light weight, and I asked Dad, "How does this look?" Like after I gave her a few months of training, and yeah. then he said it was really good. Like she was, you know, doing it really well. And from there, he took he took over. I knew I was gonna start training again. I'm yep. like, nah, I'm not gonna like coach her or anything to. You know, after that, that will take over, but yeah. But even now, like, with my training sessions, because Malik's gone through all of it too, he knows, you know, what's coming next. He'll always, you know, try to motivate me, um, you know, and he'll remind me of my technique as well mm. and things like that. So, yeah, he helps out. Because I asked her what, what happened there and then how did that feel and, like, I sort of know what the problem would, would be. Yeah. Because I know how she felt like she, you know, she'll tell me what, what she felt and then I'll tell her, yeah, I know what you did there, you know, I'll know exactly what happened, you know. So I sort of, I sort of help her out if I can. I, I put my, there's both of us now, it's me and dad giving us, giving her advice, so. Well, you probably have your own, like, spin on anything that happens in the gym because you haven't been cited. Um, like when when she does have a technical fault mm. i don't know if you can like if she describes it to you or if you can hear things or yeah. just just i mean even probably like just because you guys have a really good relationship as well just feel things that like mm. um like w what's going on right yeah 
Yeah, he and can. If I do a lift and it sounds a bit off, he'll be like, "So what happened there?" Um, no, I'll say, I'll did you? I go, did you step forward there or something, or did you? Because I can hear it didn't sound. I go, was that a bit slow? Because I could, I can hear when it's fast because I can hear when the bar hits her hip and her feet move. But if yeah. it sounds sounds sluggish, I could hear the lip sounds. Oh okay, yeah, oh that was sounded a bit. You know, and she goes, yeah, it was. <laughs> you know, it was a bit sluggish. I so do you ever um, just like. Try to be quiet so that Malik doesn't. Oh, well, actually, I remember this happened the other day. I was doing a squat and I think I got up really fast and I dropped it. Like yeah. I got the squat, I finished my set, and Malik was like, "Did you miss that?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I missed it." Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, "No, no, I'm just joking. I got it." Oh, so you <laughs> but he wasn't like, sure because I, I saw. Sure because I saw. I did the squat. I dropped it. And I saw his face. Like he he looked a bit confused. Like, did you just miss that? And then <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I missed it." <laughs> No, because well, she must have gotten it so easy that yeah. it was so quick that she just got up and dropped it. I felt because sometimes you, you get up and you're, you're stuck and then oh, dropped it. Yeah, you know, yeah. like I thought, did that happen? It must have been so easy. Like, oh, then you got it. It's either she got it really easy or she just got stuck and missed it. So, yeah, because you know why? Because she's done that a few times. Like, she's dad's pushed her with some squats and yeah. she... <laughs> She's missed it. And I just wanted to make sure, the, you know, she, her legs weren't that tight. I wanted to make sure, you know. Oh. Well. <laughs> um, how how did Malik teach you the lifts? Uh, would it was it just demonstrating and then yeah. um, well, you having a go? Because like, how was he able to to make sure you were doing it right at the start? Well, firstly, because I'd seen him train all the time, like, you know, I knew roughly what to do. Yeah, just um, lift the bar, put it over your head. Yeah. It's pretty easy, right? Anyone uh, can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I knew roughly what to do. He just gave me some cues, like, um, you know, just when you pull it, pull it up in here and then catch under. He didn't make it very complicated. Okay. Yeah. And I just did, like, you know, all right, pull here, catch under. And then I kept doing that. And then he could sort of, he could hear first of all and then I could see because I had the mirror as well yeah. to see and I could see if it looked right like comparing to what Malik, how Malik used to live I could see I'd be like oh yeah that one looked pretty good it was alright you know because I see when people teach people they make it so complicated and the things they look the things they try to teach it just um, doesn't really matter to me they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're trying to like um, I don't know it's, they're trying to like talk about things that don't really matter that just happen naturally and I um, you know because I remember once someone was saying um, you know when you holding a snatch am I meant to engage in my traps when I do this like you probably are engaging your traps but you know why are you thinking about traps just just push your arms up like you just got to hold the weight up and yeah. make sure it's balanced over your head um, you don't have to think of the individual muscles or what you're doing just let 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 the arms let the things go naturally but um the the thing that i was teaching you is just to um just um you know pull to here and go under fast like the, it's more like hearing it and move the move fast because if you, some people don't think of speed and that makes your technique look good too if you want to move like i was making sure saba was moving quick from when she was young and sitting right down and stuff like that and then it turned out to look really good her technique because she was just doing things that I thought would make you know would make her lift good. Just my own ideas of what what I felt was important. But yeah, I don't think other people would teach like what I what I was trying to get Cyber to do. So what what do you think are the most important things to teach someone who's learning weightlifting, Malik? Um, just to. Well, when, when everything's important, right? Yeah. Like, there's not one thing, because I've, I've heard, of, I've spoken to other ex-lifters. Some people think, oh, just speed's really important. Someone's saying, you got to be fast. And someone's saying technique is really important. Someone's saying strength is important and things like that. I reckon all, all is important, but when you're teaching the technique, I think it's just keep it simple. Um, not to get too complicated with... Um, like let let the body move naturally the way you want like it wants to go you just um s some people are trying too much with the detail but the, everyone's got their own body um but yeah i don't i don't know i don't want, like i don't think one thing's very important it's just 
um, it's more your mindset and training and built and like being tough you know like just the whole the whole thing the whole um, process going through the process it's not like you know one thing's very important you know you could work on t being the best technician and all that but you're missing you're missing out if you're not actually going and training hard and pushing for weights too you know you could just have perfect technique but it's not going to get you anywhere as well yeah like anyone can snatch yeah. 40 kilos perfectly yeah but to snatch 140 kilos or 135 yeah. or whatever it is uh it, it takes a lot more than just technique right yeah so it's not like just technique it's just what you, what you have to do you have to have certain amount of leg strength to get up with a some clean you know like so it's just about if i knew oh, sub i needed to clean and jerk 60 kilos for instance when she was young i knew she'd have to at least um, be pumping out squats on 60s for reps, you know, and be strong enough to do that. Her back has to be strong to pull 60s, you know, things like that. She has to be trained to do those things, you know, and doing the technique right is another part of it. But her body, like I said, for Saba, her body was move, moving right from the start. She could sit, she could, you know, it wasn't hard for her to do things right. So then she's about her going through training, being disciplined and doing it, you know, training for it. You mentioned that earlier as well, that Saba uh, sort of, like she could do a lot of the movements quite well from the start, like she was sitting to a squat yeah. um, and like sitting to a pull, whatever. Was that something that you struggled with when you started? Um, I wasn't the most um, flexible person, but um, it, I didn't, I was just doing the same thing as Saba, like it didn't, I didn't dwell on it like we said, it's just like, if I was a bit stiff, I couldn't sit as well, that was, that's it, that's just how I sit, and just kept training with that, well, I didn't, I, you can't do more like, try to do something to fix that, it's just, you know, that's how my body was or whatever, if I, it's just my joints are a bit stiffer, and doing the normal lifts, you're getting flexible anyway, like doing a snatch, and that you're you're pretty much working on flexibility. It's not like, oh, oh, my miracle was to go and rumble roll and stretch or something to yeah. fix that out. Or, you know, it's just doing. There was I was just pretty much trained how Saba did, and just you know, that's just how I was. My my talent was what it was. You know, you just got to work with what you got. So yeah. It seems like that's something that uh, is, you say a lot that, and I think that obviously comes from you just overcoming a lot of uh, your own obstacles yeah. in that, you know, you, you kind of just like don't dwell on things that come up or challenges that come up. You kind of yeah. just be like, oh, you know, oh, well, it is what it is. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just keep going, keep trying. Yeah. You, that's that's all you know and the thing is I don't, I don't even think of it like if someone's saying oh you, you, the bar's a bit crooked there or you're a bit stiff there I'd, I'd be like what's this guy talking about like I think I'm the like I'm perfect I'm the best what do you mean like um you see, and then dad say oh don't worry about him you know whatever he said you know like you know da dad would tell me not to worry or listen to anyone I just I just thought I was um really good anyway it doesn't matter what you know, if someone has a bit of, you know, something to say, it's not that, you know, if something wasn't perfect, because like, ch spending time trying to perfect things that are really aren't that important, I could be going and just keeping my mind on being hungry and being a champion, training hard and just keep, keep going. And then that, that's going to get me further than just trying to be a bit more technically good or quick, you know, fix up something it's a bit crooked or whatever, you know, like, mm. like a, uh, a 5%, sorry, like a 1%, uh, you know, better technique yeah. is not going to add like a hundred kilos to your lift. But yeah. if you come into the gym every day and yeah. you do the repetitions, like that might do that. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. Especially when it comes from you. I'll listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me about, uh, your year last year, Salah. Because yeah. it was a pretty good year for you uh, in weightlifting. Last, I 
Yeah, and they did in school too. Was that last year? That you did no, before? the year. Um, oh, the year before. The year before was a good year, in my okay. opinion. But last year, um, because I it was you know focusing on my HSC year twelve the last year of school, so I sort of just like put I didn't put weightlifting completely aside. Like I was still training the whole time, um, but it wasn't a big focus. Like I just just qualified for a junior world. You know, I'll go to that. Um, you know, just and try when and was make junior world? Sorry. When? Yeah. Um, it was in July. It was in the June July holiday, so that was pretty good for me as well. I didn't have to miss out on school, so I was like, yeah, I'll just you know go to that. Um, you know, just try and uh, like you know maintain my weights. I don't need to push for big weights. I just need to you know focus on my schoolwork now, um, which I did. You know, I did pretty good there. So you know, I just now I'm getting back into the lifting good. Um, now I'm training harder. So you know. Yeah, last year was just mainly about, um, you know, focusing on my school and just, you know, keep training just so I don't lose the strength that I had. Um, but, yeah. Were you happy with how you did in the HSC? Yeah, I was very happy. And so, for those that don't know, you're now going to become a physiotherapist. Yeah. Where are you studying? Um, I think most likely the Australian Catholic University. Okay, so that's not too far. It's Strathfield, right? Um, well, the physio campus is actually in North Sydney. That's even better, right? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's you know, compared to the other universities, like I was thinking of the University of Sydney, mm. but their campus is in Lipcombe, yeah. the physio, and it's going to be too hard to get there. Like, there's a couple of trains and a bus, but, you know, North Sydney is just two trains, and then as soon as you come out of the train station, you're at the university. So, yeah. you know, it's much easier to get there. And, you know, it doesn't really worry me what university I go to as long as I just get the degree yeah. that I want. Are you kind of excited to see, like, I mean, you, you've been training for, like, eight, well, six years at least, right? So yeah, 12? seven years. So yeah. six, seven years. And you have an idea of how the body works and how it adapts to strength mm-hmm. training. Uh, obviously, I don't know if you've had to deal with your own injuries, but you've seen Malik get injured and... Mm-hmm. And, um, and things like that. Are, are you excited to see or learn a little bit more about the science of why these things happen and, and uh, I guess, how the body works? Yeah, definitely. Like, whatever I learn in my course, I'll be able to apply it to my training. Um, you know, if I do get injured, you know, I know how to manage it and all that sort of stuff. So it'll definitely benefit my training. Is that part of the reason you chose that? Um, I think so. Like, I can't really see myself doing anything else anyway. And, you know, I want to, like, with my physio now, I particularly want to work with athletes. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be the one that just works with old people in the hospital and all that stuff. <laughs> like, you know, my main goal is to get to work with athletes and stuff. So, yeah, if it's got to do with sport and it'll benefit my sport, so, yeah, I'll be happy to do that. Yeah. And now let's talk about the year preceding that, mm-hmm. the year where... Where I guess the magic happened. Um, yeah. That was a pretty big deal, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think because it was my last year as a youth lifter, I really wanted to, you know, try and get the best results I could, like, you know, keep the record, um, you know, high as for my last year and stuff. So I think I started off the year as a 58 lifter. And um, yeah, at the youth worlds when I went there in the 58, like, I remember the previous year because the weights they had done at the Youth Worlds that year, I was like, oh yeah, I want to try and get a medal at the next year, at the next Youth Worlds. So I was like, you know, I was close to them. Um, and then for those Youth Worlds when they came in 2017, I ended up getting the weights um, that I could have got, like that I was aiming for. Um, but because there was a bigger, um, more lifters there, yeah. like um, I still got the same rank from the previous year, but I'd done much better weights. Yeah. So if I had done what I did at those youth worlds the Deep previous year, thought, I yeah. would have gotten the medal. But um, anyway, that's just how it turned out. But anyway, yeah, like I tried that year, you know, just to really, um, you know, build as much strength as I could and, you know, train hard to do the best I could. And, and, and like when you said you tried harder, is that like what did that entail compared to the years preceding? Like was it just like... You know, we training uh, more days a week, more sessions per day, or like, uh, was everything just ramped up? Was the intensity higher? Like, like what did your training look like? Um, I definitely did train more. Like, I was doing morning sessions before school as well. Like, I'd wake up at like five o'clock. Yeah. Come train here. 
um, yeah, and I think I was just, because I knew the next year I'm not going to be able to train as much and because I had to focus on the school and stuff. So I was like, you know, I'll just put more of a focus on my actual lifting now. Um, yeah, and just make goals um, along the way and, you know, try and achieve all of those. Um, yeah, and my dad was supporting me with that too. So, yeah, it sort of kind of just worked out that year, just the way everything came together. Um, but, yeah, and then also because I ended up moving up a category to that year, I think my strength went up as well with that, like, just naturally. So I was able to improve um, with my weights and stuff. So, yeah. Awesome. But um, what I'd like to add, you, I think it wasn't... Um, it's not like she... It wasn't only she trained harder, I think, you know, because she was um, aiming for something and she was more determined in training and she was, tr like, looking, f you know, she was trying harder, you know, aiming for something. You know, she was looking forward to improving. It wasn't like... Because, you know, you that we were always training hard from before. Yeah. It's just... She was, you know, you have an aim, you want to do something and you you keep going till you get there, sort of thing. That's yeah, like you had a goal. Yeah, that's that's what it, that's probably what it was. And then why Saba her this year went down? She, you know, mind it's okay. She's focusing on HSC this year, and her she wasn't focused in training. It just wasn't. That's why she's still training. Like she was trying to train it hard, but it wasn't the same mindset because she just let herself know like she knew like there's not she's not gonna go for anything this year mentally like just it's all about her school you know that's why it didn't turn out as good this year but as yeah. soon as school finished um she cleared her mind and then she straight away got she went to a comp in the it, it was like how long did you have to train for that from when you finished school the pacific cup yeah, in a, within a month and a half, she went back to her best weights that she did last year. She did 80, snatch and 100, clean and jerk. So, um, she's got, so she got time, like, she's got time to build from there. She's at her yeah. best and now she can actually go for PBs for this, you know, for this year now. What are you aiming for this year? Do you have a goal? In terms of weights? Yeah. Or do you have a goal in terms of weights? Uh, <laughs> I don't really have specific numbers or anything. Mm -hmm. but Mark, do you have, do you have uh, goals for her? Oh, uh, we, we <laughs> actually we do we do have a goal, but she just wants to show it. Okay. She doesn't want to talk like about. To. Okay, that's because, right. You don't have to talk about it. Um, she's like, I'm the same before. Like, I just want to go on the platform, and then people will be like, "Whoa, this guy! Yeah, what an improvement!" You know, not like I remember there were people before that used to always say they're gonna do this and that, and then they don't. Yeah. And you don't want to be that sort of guy. Yeah. You know. <laughs> So let's just show show what we're gonna do instead of talk about. It. You can talk about it once you've done it, you know. Fair so, enough. Yeah, you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know if something gets in. You know, if you get injured or, you know, you just can't do it. You know. And I think there is some research to show that if you talk about a goal and tell people what your goal is before you you actually achieve it, mm -hmm. that you get the the rush and the. Uh, like hormonal reaction mm. so you you are less likely to actually achieve the goal yeah. whereas if you keep it internal yeah. You know, yeah. you, you're basically stoking that fire that yeah. fire is always there and you're gonna you know really race to hit it yeah yeah it's um so exciting when you're able to get pbs like when you're a junior and you're always you know from youth junior getting pbs and when you get to the stage where you've hit your best and it's so hard to improve from there because you know as a senior you know when i was a senior it's just just to get one kilo more it's so hard you know you've because you've you've reached your you know best there's no more not much more you can do probably just to get to your best you got to train hard and get that yeah you know i've been through that saba hasn't reached that yet like she's still 18 so she's still gonna improve with age you know not you know because you could Saba could you don't know when there's a time where you're gonna get your best and then you just um, that's that's it you can you, you gotta train hard to always get sort of you know those weights because you're just gonna you get your best time and that's it you know, there's always a time for someone but the most exciting time is when you're a junior and you're improving all the time yeah the more you get, the bigger the weights you get, the harder it is to improve. 
because like you're right right up there mm. you know and you basically i mean and that's why you see at the highest level people are winning by one or two kilos yeah you know whereas sometimes i mean i like when i watch sabra for example like the state championships like she can win by 10 kilos yeah <laughs> because she's you, like she you're just that good comparatively to everyone else yeah tell me about this platform uh, this platform the Sydney 2000 Olympic platform the official one they competed on so, so this is this is where the first uh, female Olympics for yeah. weightlifting was ever like the first girl that ever competed in weightlifting at mm. the Olympic Games competed on this platform yeah oh let's 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 forget about the the females there let's let's Focus. Yeah, this is where Naim so long ago. That's true as well. Olympic. Yeah. And Pyrrhus Dimas won his third gold medal, and that guy, the Iranian Hussein Razaza, there broke world records. You know, Halil Mutlu won the Olympics. There was all these great lifters that competed on there. Yeah. Who Who is your favorite weightlifter? Do you have a favorite, Malik? Actually, um. I don't have a favorite because there's so many great ones. You know, you watch the worlds and everything. There's so many. Like, you see someone do a good lift, and you're like, oh, that's my favorite now, you know? But, um... Oh, like, you can have a few favorites. Just yeah. tell me who, who some of your favorites are. When other I, than your dad and well, Saba. Well, from when I was young, when I first started lifting, the uh, the Olympics, I watched Sydney 2000, there was this uh, um, Bulgarian lifter, um, Galadon Boevsky. Mm-hmm. What have you? Uh, he won. Probably. He won the sixty-nine kilo um, gold medal um, at the Sydney two thousand. Yeah. Yeah, and he won the world championships the year before. But I just like the Bulgarian lifters. And then now, obviously, before was like Dimas, Na- Naim, and all that. What is it about the Bulgarian lifters that you like so much? Um, they. I just. I just. I've heard the stories about how tough they were, how hard they trained. Yeah. And I really respect that. But um, it's just, uh, they were, you know, they were just like a, a small country, poor country, and they just um, managed to ch- produce a lot of champions against like the more dominant and powerful Soviet Union, and they were the only ones that could challenge them yeah. before. And um, it was really, yeah, it's just really, um, yeah, how tough they were, you know, and how they were able to do that. Uh, you know, the coach Ivan Abajev yeah. recently passed away. He produced all those champions. I just, just it was inspirational the stories, you know, you hear of them, how hard they train. You know, the Bulgarian method of training. It's the most intense, like, weightlifting um, program. It's simple, but it's just hard to do. Mm. Just snatch, clean, and jerk to max, um, two, three times a day. Well, actually, three, yeah, three times a day. They do that. Like to train like that, no one can do that. We can't do that. I think just they were able to do it because they, you know, training overseas, probably what they take and stuff. They can do that. And, and I guess it was a different time as well, right? Yeah. Uh, um, I'm I'm sure for you guys you are thinking a little bit about like longevity like being able to lift next year or the year after whereas maybe they might not have been thinking about that yeah just get the max out of what they can this year and if you die you die yeah <laughs> yeah but um my favorite actually lifter right now is what's his name that lasha lasha uh, tala yeah, Katsi? yeah. Tala Katsi? yeah. I, I think he's the best lifter at the moment like the best overall that's who I think is the, gra- the greatest lifter for this time right now. That's who I reckon he's number one. Do you think he'll uh, clean and jerk over to, what is it, 266 is the all time best clean and jerk ever? I don't know if he'll do that. I reckon he'll probably get like in the 260s, he'll probably reach that, but um, he'll get the best total, that's for sure. Yeah, and just because his snatch, snatch is yeah. amazing. Yeah, I'd love to see him get a 225 snatch, through four reds. Oh, that'd be so cool. You know, that would be like really awesome. <laughs> that would be. Because what's his best now? 221. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so he's not far off. And then apparently when he does it, they look really easy. Like, it just looks like a light. 
mm. weight still. I don't know, supers make it look easy, make yeah. big weights float up. Like. Yeah, it'd probably for you, it'd probably be like Saba hitting that back squat, like, oh, did he miss it? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, he just stood up and yeah. dropped it. Yeah. <laughs> Saba actually um, saw him training when she went to Georgia. Yeah. Um, so the world's there, she was, he was in the training hall training there, even though it was a junior world's, I think you just for the excitement, go train there where, you know, if there's a competition training mm. hall, he can made the most of his training. So he went there, was snatching 200 like every day. Wasn't he sub? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. But he wasn't like, I'm surprised, like he was, he was doing snatch like 200, all right, that's 20 kilos off his best. He was, Squatting, I thought he'd be squatting more. Like, they, he was probably can squat more, but he was just like squatting, back squatting 260 or something for reps. I thought he'd be doing like 300s and stuff. Yeah. You know, that's just pretty much what he's going for, for clean and jerk. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I thought he'd be doing more of that. He probably can. Probably can if he goes heavy, but that's probably his training program. He will, didn't need to go heavy that heavy that. yet. Yeah. What's your best back squat? Like 250? Yeah. For a single or yeah, single. Yeah, my all-time best lifts one forty. Well, in competition, one forty-three snatch, one seventy-nine clean jerk, and um, in training, one forty-five, one eighty. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is that what that is up there? Yeah, that? yeah. Well, we only put our comp. Oh, those are your comps. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But um, I did them at separate comps. The yeah. 143, when I did that, I did it with 175 clean jerk. Yeah, I which is why your total is not indicative of... Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I did 318 total there. I did um, 143, 175. That was 2014 for the Commonwealth Games trials. Yeah. And um, I, my, I did five out of six. My last attempt was for a 180 clean jerk. I cleaned it and jerk just went a bit in front, like it went up to arm's length. But just, yeah, just a bit in front. I <laughs> couldn't secure that. That would have yeah. been really awesome if we got that. To get that lift as yeah. well. Um, 179. 179. I did that in 2011 when I qualified for Senior Worlds. And it was much harder than now to qualify for Senior Worlds because like, I needed 319 total to yeah. get that. And I got a PB in the snatch first. And um, that was a really exciting competition. It was at a national championships in 2011 and um my best snatch was 138 and i was a junior two years before that that was my like record and i hadn't gotten a pb in a snatch for a while and i got a pb that day in 140 snatch first yeah. time and i was excited about that and i wasn't even thinking that i'm gonna go for this world's total because it was so big 319 my best was 305 before that as a total Whoa. you know and then um wait what was your clean and jerk before that my, my clean and jerk um was 170 in comp but i yeah. did a 175 in training and okay. i did, hadn't even done 180 or anything but i went for 179 that day because i got that 140 snatch and then started 170 clean and jerk um for my first attempt so that was 310 and i'm like okay i've already well, there's nothing else to go for you know one nationals yeah 310 let's just put one now i've got opportunity i can go to 179 take this nine kilo jump and go to qualify for senior worlds that was the first time I thought of going for the senior world. I was excited there. If I thought about it before too much, probably would have gotten too nervous and not done it, you know? Yeah. Like, so because the opportunity came, I got the PB in the snatch, did an easy 170 clean and jerk. Like I felt confident right in that moment. And dad asked me there and then, and then I got really happy, like got excited to go for that 179. And then it just happened because I really wanted, I thought this would make it really good. Like, go get a massive PB yeah. and to go for the a senior worlds. And um, yeah, I remember catching it and then I, I bounced in the clean. Like it was usually I'll catch my cleans and get up straight away. Mm. So I caught it, I got stuck, bounced a couple and then got up and then got, and then it was just like some <laughs> slow motion. I got the joke and I'm like stumbling. At first I wasn't sure have I got this and then and then I couldn't believe it when I, when the buzzer went and I dropped, I'm like, did, are they going to accept this? Is it even a lift? Like, yeah. is it a, did I press out? Did anything go wrong? And then uh, there was two white lights. It was one red and that's it. I got, I got it and I, I just went crazy after that. I was probably the craziest I went after I got a lift because it was such a big PB, 
you know? Well, that's a nine kilo competition PB. In clean and jerk. In the clean and jerk itself. And then in the total, you had already PR'd your snatch. Yeah. And then just in general, you only, your best clean and jerk was 145. So that's a yeah. four kilo, just anything PR at a time where like you're already like, yeah. like you were saying, like it's hard to PR, like to make PBs, right? Yeah. Well, it's ha- it was hard after that to make PBs. Yeah. Because I, I was 22 there, I think up to, I got my strength, like like my peak in my abilities and strength at 22, and then I could just train hard and go for similar weights all the way up to 28 or whatever. Yeah. That's, that's that was it. So, you don't, you don't know when you're going to start that peak, and that's going to be that window between, from there. You, that was for me, started at 22, I was at my strongest, and then try to hold that as much as you can. For yeah. all your comps, you know, and that's what I, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was still my biggest total ever as well. It was three nineteen total. If I got that one eighty clean jerk at the the Commonwealth Games trials, it would have been a lot bigger total. But yeah, um, yeah it was three eighteen total that one. It would have been like three twenty three total or something. Yeah, if I got that, but yeah, still I really wanted the one eighty in comp just to get a one eighty clean jerk. Mm. In competition but I've done that in training it's all right it's still pretty good <laughs> does your dad ever um, like like rile you up about not uh, hitting the weights that he hit no um, because he doesn't care about that he thinks I'm a lot better than him okay he, he thinks like you um, um, man, you what you've done some like no one can do trust me like now he's telling me like so he's just insanely proud of you. Yeah, so proud of how much I can do. Like before, he wouldn't say that when I was a junior and that because he wanted me to get there first. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like, he wants me to feel proud now of what I've done. Like, I was trying to get his weights. You know, I was trying to like, oh, I want to do more than dad or whatever. Yeah. But um. As every son would do yeah. that, right? Like, you want to be better than your. Yeah. I, I'm guessing your dad has been a hero to both of you, right? Yeah. In a lot of ways, yes. so. Uh, I'm sure you guys have always yeah. wanted to surpass them in some some aspect. But you know, you know, with Dad when he was training, he didn't even train and get his best because he was working so much. Going, he was a mechanic. His family didn't support him to do it and everything. He he was just um, he didn't train like a mean saber. Yeah, he was doing it like he trained hard, but not um, well, often. Consistent. Not wasn't cons- wasn't consistent and yeah, didn't take it as serious as us. You know, it wasn't like professional, like, as you know, even like the uh, his other competitors, like, they'd take time off work when it came to training for Olympic trials and Olympics, like Robert Cabas and other people, the other great lifters, they were, they were full in, you know, full time athletes. Dad was like, um, it works, he did his best for what he, what it was, but yeah. he was very talented. Like, you know, you know what amazed me about um, my dad even more than what he did before because I got close to his weight um, what he did <laughs> while I was like when he was retired like with the lifts he, he did some like crazy things in the gym like to inspire me like while I was when I first started weightlifting yeah there was, one, there was one day where I went to the gym um, uh, I was doing power jerks on 120 that was my best around 120 130 climb jerk I was probably probably 16 or 15 so we'll calculate that would have been around 2016 what year would that be 2005 yeah dad dad was already about 44 there and he hadn't he hadn't touched the bar for how long like he hasn't he doesn't even train yeah you know what i'm saying he stopped training when he was like 26 he's he was about 45 then and he did a he was getting the shits with how how I was doing my jerks, like I was a bit shaky and stuff. Yeah. I was like, man, what's wrong with you? Like, you gotta fucking, you gotta go, like, you, you gotta put more effort into it. But like, get, he wants me to do it more, like, boom, like, snap my arms. Yeah. Like, you know, like, stop being shaky and soft, you know? Like, I'll show you, look at me, I'm fucking 45 years old. I'm gonna show you how to do it. He slaps a 10 on, so it's 140. <laughs> picks up this fucking power jerks, like, cold, cold, like that. No fucking, <laughs> no. <laughs> No training for years. No warm up. No, no warm up. Just puts 140, 
he like slaps an extra ten and snaps a joke and then he walks out of the gym and then I thought, fuck, he must be angry well, but then he told us after he was so sore. He, like, he stretched, uh, he, he got the weight, but he was like, he said he stretched all his abs and everything. You know, that was the reason he left the gym. You know, I thought, fuck, is he that angry? Like he walked out, you know? He didn't want to show his pain, you know? There was, an, there was another time, even a year later or two, it was my mate Con, he was doing snatches and he wanted to get 100 snatches, he's a 69 lifter. Is Con? this Con from... Con uh, Vassal, yeah. From yeah, so from Olympic, Olympic gym. gym yeah. yeah, he saw Con was doing snatches, warming up and for, for his snatches. This was at their gym. Yeah. Dad goes, oh, I'll do some snatches with you. And then Con got really sucked and happy. He's like, he wants to see Dad lift. Like, it's exciting to see an old man lift that he was good before you know see what they can do is that what he said yeah no no, no. <laughs> like, he said it's, it's exciting to see like one of the old you know those old great lifters you know imagine you see someone you know that was a great lifter before you want to see oh shit what are they made of now like yeah. when they're old you just want to you know see them move again you know and then um what happened um they were warming up together and then dad's like whatever you snatch i'll try to snatch you know we'll keep up then Con got up, they were warming up together, and that's that matched Con and snatched 100 kilos there, and he hadn't and he hadn't done much as like he wasn't training like that, that he only did that 140 you know, that and that wrecked him. <laughs> yeah, but there that one he actually warmed up for the snatches because yeah. you need it, like snatches like a joke. All right, it's just the throwing a weight overhead, but the snatch you got to pull and go really sit yeah. right under. But he, able, he was just able to just randomly snatch 100 kilos at 40, you know, mid 40s, just like that with no training. You know what I mean? And um, he, he, he could just like do things like that. Once he just pumped out squats and he just worked up to a single 230 like that, just with nothing. Like, you no, know, he just would randomly put it, do, a, do a like session like that. He, he's probably, I could probably count on my finger the amount of times he's trained. Like, you know, he just did something just to move, just to show us, like, just to be, like, a cool stunt or something, you know? Yeah. Just to show you that he's still the boss and yeah. he still has it. Yeah. <laughs> and that that freaked me out more because now that I, like, I'm sort of, like, I just retired recently from weightlifting, you know? And um, for me to just come in and warm up and do a bit of a weight, like, do a 140 power jerk or something because I'm not focused on trying to go for a comp. I think, fuck, how did he do that? Like... <laughs> Imagine me 15 years older, like way, you know, you know, at 45, I'm not going to be able to do that. No way. Especially cold and that. How, how tough was he? How, like, you know, how much talent does this guy have? How strong is he mentally, you know, as well? Like he, for him to believe in me to do big weights, like, you know, a blind guy and give me the courage to do that. He must be a very, like, he must be like very psychologically strong too to believe in me you know he must have high um you know um very high standards you know belief you know to achieve something great too he's very tough you know that's really really respect my dad yeah know? yeah oh he seems like an awesome dude yeah is he here he was he just uh had a few things that he couldn't stay today uh, yeah okay. yeah uh. Hopefully, um, by you the might time meet him. Like might might yeah. Say hello. Yeah. Otherwise, maybe I'll come out again. Yeah. <laughs> um. One last thing I want to talk about um, is just like the other challenges you guys have faced. Mm. Um. So obviously, you know, your eyesight has been a has been a challenge, and there've been other setbacks, mm. right? Like there've been competitions where you haven't done as well as you wanted or yeah. whatever. Can you, can you guys both uh, talk to me about times like that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, have you had, let's talk about your bad comps. Have you had, you've only had a couple, not that as much as me. I've had a lot more bad, um, but. Your career's I longer, think, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think the time where I probably didn't do the best was the Junior Worlds last year. Yeah. Like, almost bombed down in snatches, got one clean and jerk, but at that time I guess it didn't really bother me because I knew like I'm not going for big weights anyway yeah um and because I just focusing on school I was just like you know it doesn't really matter but um I guess after that comp it got me like 
I couldn't wait to finish the HSC so I could get back into training now. So I guess um, things like that where you're set back um, or you're not training as well, like if I just felt like, you know, it motivated me more to train better and get bigger weights again, like, you know, and go for PBs. Like it makes me more excited to show people what I'm going to do next time sort of thing. Like I always like to be one of those lifters where, um, where I have like sort of a period of break, but when I come back, I'm doing something way more than what I used to do. Yeah. You know, like I like to shock people like that sometimes. So I guess if I don't do as well at a combo, I'll be like, you know, it doesn't matter. Next time I'll show them what I'm going to do. You yeah. know, sort she, of like she that. can already, she already believes she's going to come back way stronger. She doesn't care if something <laughs> is and going. That's, a, that's an awesome way to be. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, Cause a lot of people will let that one bad performance dictate their whole career sometimes right yeah the only thing i don't like about having a bad performance though dad will always in training see that's what happened if you keep <laughs> doing this training you, get, you know you're gonna do that on the comp like you know he'll always go back to that that's why you miss that lift because you did this so i'm like ah oh, damn it that's why i can't have a bad comp anymore so dad's gonna mention that again <laughs> No, like she overrules it as soon as she has a good comp, then that's it, that comp's forgotten until yeah. she has that good comp again. Yeah. You know, but it's always whatever's happened recently is the thing that you're thinking about. Oh. That last bad comp you had, that's, you know. So she's, till she trains and gets the new, <laughs> the next comp done. Isn't that right, Son? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we've had other setbacks too, like outside of weightlifting as well. Sure. Do, like, would you um, like to talk about that stuff? Yeah, I guess we can mention it. Like, um, 2011, our parents separated. So our mum walked out on us. Um, and our dad's now our carer, um, single parent looking after us. Oh. When when Sabo says carer, she, we've got... Um, when Sabo was 11 years old at the time and I had a... We've got another younger sister that's eight years old. That was eight years old at the time. This was in 2011. Yeah. I was already grown up, 22. I have another sister um, that's younger than me, but she's disabled. Yeah. Completely uh, like disabled. She's on a wheelchair and everything. So just um, um, dad had to stop work and um, take care of um, the family um, as a sole parent. Um, so, you know, that my my two young sisters that were still you know, eight and 11 at the time and then my disabled um, sister can't do anything because she's um, like mentally and physically like she's on a wheelchair and she doesn't understand as well and me I, I can't do obviously I can't step up and do too much because I'm blind as well yeah so it was a big uh, weight on my dad's shoulders and you know just to for for him to train us and do to do stuff, it was a bit, a bit of a struggle around that time. Even though it was my best time for weightlifting, it didn't allow it to be a really sweet time because it was a bit, a bit of a struggle. And that's why I thought after then, that's where Saba started training. I wanted to get something like going. Like I wanted to get. I thought maybe I can get Saba into weightlifting, give her a passion, give her something, just to forget about that. You know, get keep her more like just go. Um, and try to achieve something let her have that too like how i felt it when i was young that you know you're proud trying to chase something trade you know chase something that's awesome like you know representing australia and pb it's just a good feeling training and doing that i wanted her to experience that as well so um that kept us occupied as well and yeah we did we did our best with what happened there um, and, and has that been helpful? Like, has it been, uh, I guess, uh, an escape from, I mean, I mean, I know I find weightlifting like a really meditative process. Like yeah. when I'm, you know, squatting, when I'm doing things like mm. you can kind of forget about everything else that's going on. Yeah. Was it like that for you guys as well? Yeah. Cause when I'm, when I'm in the gym, I, I, I feel like I'm here. I don't even think of myself. Like I feel like, Oh, I'm like you feel like you're a machine when you're lifting a massive weight, eh? Yeah. Like you know you're doing something, you feel like on top of the world, you know, the adrenaline and everything. 
And I can imagine that for you as well, mm. and probably Saba, that you are actually doing things that not a lot of people can do. Yeah. Like if you walk, like you, you, if you walk down the street, mm. how many people do you yeah. know that can lift, you know, 140 kilos over their head? Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, uh, for Saba's case, like 100 kilos. Yeah. Um, there he is. Yeah. Uh, there's there is. George. Hi, George. How you doing? Good, man. We've um, got the camera, we've got the, we're in the middle of her, her interview now. Do you want to join us? <laughs> <laughs> it's alright, we weren't talking about you at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, uh, yeah, you, you feel amazing when, you, when you're doing those things, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, so we, you know, it's good we got, you know, Getting Saba into it, it was really good. Was, she kept me company in the gym too. Um, so there was not just that helping me, like I had two people that can help me out a bit too. Saba can, you know, help me just, you know, she can load the weights sometimes. <laughs> so that doesn't have to always do it. Okay, I remember when I first started as well, um, I didn't want to tell my grandmother because she's one that's <laughs> like, no, girls can't do weight if they can't do this <laughs> and that. So we'd always say, oh yes, I was just helping me out with training. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and I had to hide yeah. from her for yeah. like about, I think, the first year. Until yeah. I started competing, I can't hide that, like, you know, once I start traveling mm-hmm. and stuff. So, you know, I had to slowly, like, you know, say, yeah, I'm just doing a little bit, you know, just for fitness. Yeah. yeah. It's all right. She's going to stop soon. Like, she's just <laughs> yeah. doing it, like, for a bit and then... She's like, yeah, but when's she going to stop now? Yeah, you know, she's still asking she... me now, when am I going to stop now? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> but then she's like, oh, yeah, your younger sister. About my younger sister, she's like, no, she's not doing it. Mm. <laughs> she can't do it. Mm, no. she, she says to her, make sure you don't do it, like, you know. Yeah. I'm sure Malik will, will overrule that at some point. <laughs> oh, um, the best I can do is I got her to do squats and stuff. She... She's very talented. She could be a good weightlifter, but she just uh, she not in, not anything. interested. Mm. And how old is she now? She's fifteen now. Fifteen. But I do make her do some sort of fitness training with us, just because it's good for someone to be healthy and fit. So we do when I go to the park, we do a bit of running, do a few things like that together, and she does a bit of presses, squats, a few things, you know. Awesome. Yeah. Just to give her, I mean, just a little bit of an advantage yeah. over everyone else as well, right? Yeah. Well, I think that's a pretty good place to leave off. Yeah. Do you guys have any closing statements or anything that you want to tell our audience? Mm, well, we've covered we've covered a lot, but um, you know, if they want to, you know, follow Saba on Instagram, see what Saba's, you know in the future what she gets up to she yeah. can, you know and what uh what's your instagram handle just saba.shamir so that's s-a-b-a-h dot s sorry c-h-a-m-o-u-n yeah gotta spell it out people at home might not be able to find that and they can follow you as well malachi you have instagram too yeah i've got instagram i might put up some inspirational stuff as well so it's malik m-a-l-e-k yeah um uh, dot Shamoon C H A M O U N, and yeah, we'll s- I'll probably put up something crazy one day. Me doing if it's not weightlifting, I, m- I might show something like I might jump onto something very high or something. That'd be cool. Yeah, we should do that today. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I don't feel like it today. <laughs> that. All um, right. Guys, you can find Raw Barbell Club at Raw Barbell Club on all of our social medias. So that's uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, wherever you're listening to this podcast or watching this podcast. Uh, Please make sure to follow us and you can see more awesome people like Malak and Saba, who are very awesome. And if you liked listening to their story, uh, please reach out to us because I like to hear feedback because yeah, it's amazing I didn't know half of the things you guys were talking about yeah. beforehand and yeah. I learned so much just even about the one the athlete's journey yeah. which is really cool yeah. and then you know what goes inside your head what goes goes on inside your head yeah it's crazy uh, 
how different like an athlete's brain is from like a regular person yeah um, so yeah super cool uh, guys I hope you enjoyed that episode and yeah I'll see you next time